Hey friends, it's great to connect with you guys again today. It's a beautiful winter's day here in East London, South Africa. And uh, always a privilege to just be sharing with you guys and um, hopefully just to encourage you today and encourage you a little bit in your walk with the Lord. Such a privilege to, um, to have a relationship, a living relationship with Jesus Christ and to be able to walk that out. And um, I just wanted to share something with you today. Uh, you know, I was just, I'm going through the gospel, gospel of Luke at the moment. Uh, with some of our friends and it just always touches my heart and it's amazing how you can read the gospels over and over again and there's always something new in there for us and uh, I was just looking at chapter 11 where where Jesus teaches the disciples how to pray where it's what we call the Lord's Prayer now and where he shares uh, with them on that topic and it all starts with this disciples witnessing Jesus in a position of prayer um, let me read that to you actually in Luke chapter 1 it says, now it came to pass, he was praying in a certain place when he, when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And the more I read the gospel of Luke, I see this picture of a praying Jesus. And obviously we all know that, but it's, it's said and mentioned over and over that Jesus went to a desolate place and he prayed. Jesus isolated himself to pray. Jesus was praying in this moment and the disciples go, I, we need to learn how to, how to do that. Whatever it is. Uh, witnessing the miracles, witnessing the power, witnessing the character and the integrity of Jesus, they go in that moment and they say, this is what we need to do. Um, please teach us how to pray. And that's probably probably a great um, prayer to this day, to say, Lord, Holy Spirit, would you guide me and teach me how to develop a strong prayer life um, that's really going to connect with you. Friends, I want to remind you it's one of the greatest privileges that we have as believers is the privilege to pray to a God who actually listens I mean that's just a phenomenal idea that God inclines that's what scripture says he inclines his ears to the prayers of his people Psalm 5 says it this way I want to read it to you just listen to the privilege that we have as believers it says give ear to my words O Lord consider my meditation give heed to the voice of my cry my king and my god for to you i will pray my voice you shall hear in the morning O lord in the morning i will direct it to you and i will look up and it's this phenomenal idea that we can communicate with god that god listens to our prayers that he actually wants to listen to us when we pray that we can move god's hand when we pray what an incredible privilege and incredible story that is uh, the idea that we have a God who listens and the disciples go after witnessing the life of Jesus. They say, Lord, teach me how to do this thing. I need to learn how to pray. And all of us know the Lord's Prayer. And I'm not a Hebrew or a Greek expert on this, but I just want to show you. I want to go through it so quickly and just want to encourage you in your own prayer life. And to remind you that prayer is powerful. Prayer is the way we connect with God. Prayer is the way we move the hand of God or God moves our hand or God starts moving through us however you want to see it. Prayer is the privilege that we as believers had. It's not, it's not this toiling, laborious thing that we do, but it's actually just a living relationship with, with, with our God. And Jesus, when he teaches them how to pray, what is the first thing he says? He, so he said to them, verse 2 of Luke 11, he says, When you pray, say the following. And all of us know this part. It says, Our Father in heaven. I love that it begins with our Father. It didn't begin with our King, our Master. It began with a loving Father who is in heaven, but who's listening. And Father means Abba. It means connection. It means acceptance. Ephesians 1 verse 6 says that we are connected. We are accepted in the Beloved, right? We are accepted in the Beloved because of the grace of God that's been poured out. And when we step into a place of prayer, it's not from distance. It's not from I'm far away from God. I'm crying out to a God far, far away in heaven who might hear me. But it's connecting with my Father who is in heaven. But according to John 17, who is also in me and he's in Christ and we are in him. So it's this beautiful oneness uh, that we have in the Lord. It brings us together in Christ. And it begins relationally as a child of God, as a son and daughter of the Most High. And that is the starting point of all prayer, is identity, is knowing that I'm a son and a daughter, I'm accepted in the Beloved, and that He actually wants to listen to this conversation that I'm about to have with Him. Now, prayer has so many levels and so many elements, and I mean, there's, there's contemplative prayer, there's meditative prayer, there's intercession, there's 
There's all these different forms of prayer, but I'm talking about prayer on the most basic level today, where a disciple goes, looks at the life of Jesus and says, teach me how to do this, because I've witnessed your life, I've seen the miracles, I've seen the power, I've seen everything flowing through you, and it seems to me, which is true, that prayer is the key to all of this stuff. And it begins with Jesus going, this is how you pray, our Father. Isn't that phenomenal? <laughs> that absolutely blows my mind. That it starts out with Jesus saying, approach him as a child, approach him as a son, in simplicity, in just the simplicity of a father and a son speaking to each other. And yes, all the respect and the, all, all of those things are so important. But when my children come to me, when they want to speak to me, they, you know, they, they just speak. They just speak to their dad because they know I, I love them. There, there's ways to speak and there's respect and all of that, of course. But it's simplistic in its approach and it starts with our Father, uh, which are in heaven, right? And it's this acknowledgement of, first of all, that we are sons and daughters of God. And secondly, that we are citizens of heaven. Because if our Father is in heaven, that means we are citizens of heaven, seated with Him in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father. And this is the starting point of all prayer, is the fact that you are accepted in the Beloved, that you are a son of God, that you have a Father in heaven. And from this place, we approach our walk with the Lord. It is simplistic. It is, it is simple to do. It is not laborious. It's not toil. It's a conversation. It's Father God walking with us in the cool of the day. And we're talking about life with God. Isn't that an awesome idea? What a way to start this thing called prayer. The second line, hallowed be your name. And that's where the fear of the Lord comes in. So it's super relational. It's a father and a son communing with each other. It's that, but it's hallowed be your name. And it's this reminder about the fear of the Lord and that this name, Yahweh, this name, Jesus, is the only name in creation by which we can be saved. This is the name. The name of Jesus is the name that raises the dead. The name of Jesus is the name that command, when we speak, it, demons leave. It is the name that gives us access and allows us, whatever you pray in this, I mean, isn't it wild when Jesus goes, whatever you ask for in my name, the Father will give to you. Isn't that wild? So hallowed be your name. This name is something that needs to be revered. It needs to be feared. It's, it's the glory of a relationship with my Father. But it's also remembering who my Father is. He is the creator of all. This name is to be hallowed, it's to be feared, it's to be honored. It's to know that this is the Creator God that holds heaven and earth in His hand. Nothing is impossible for Him. And when I approach my dad, it's not a weak dad. It is the name above every name that I'm approaching. That is glorious, but I approach it as a son. I approach it in acceptance, in the beloved. And this name just allows so much for me to enter into because He is the Almighty. It's not a weak God. Hallowed be your name. The name that is above every name. The name by which all shall be saved. No other can be saved except by that glorious name, Jesus. It is the name that is so holy. Yahweh, when we speak of the Father, it is so holy that we only breathe it out. This is the name in which we approach our God. And it is glorious and it is powerful and it is beautiful. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And again, there's so many brilliant teachings on this, but I want to remind you, what is this about? It is about us acknowledging that there is a higher realm, that there is something to submit to, that His kingdom, the kingdom of our Father, which is in heaven, that is the kingdom we want to manifest around our lives. That is the way of life we want to live according to. And we pray, let your kingdom come in my life. Lord, give me understanding, give me insight, help me to understand your word, help me to do marriage according to scripture, to do family according to scripture, finances, business, ministry. Teach me how to do these things in a way that is pleasing unto the Lord. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means it's not my will, it's not my desires, it's not my passions, it's my Father's passions. And if I can just surrender into that and sit in that line a little bit, it's going to open so many possibilities that, that, that it's actually completely incredible because that's healing that's the supernatural that's miracles signs and wonders that opens up in that place that is transformation of lives reformation of societies because let your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven it's not our world it's not our way it's his way and as i acknowledge my father and understand where he is seated and he's seated in me 
But what does that bring down from heaven into my spirit that's allowed to flow into the world? It is his kingdom, his might, his power, his glory. Friends, what a privilege we have to walk with the Lord in such a way on earth as it is in heaven. And we all know that line so well, but it's not one day. It's now on earth. It's now. The kingdom is now. These prayers, the answers to our prayers, the desire that needs to be birthed in us to see our Father's kingdom manifest on earth is a today thing. It's a now thing. It's not future tense. It's, it's now. Let it happen now, Lord. Let, we see, let, let us see you touch now. We were, we were in an orphanage yesterday, a beautiful children's home, and the, these children that were abused since they were born, some of them abused so badly that you know, they're deaf, they're, they've got all sorts of um, infirmities in their body. And to sit there holding them, praying over them, realizing that when I'm praying, it's, it's now. It's not pie in the sky one day, but it's for a breakthrough today. It's to see those ears open today, those legs be strengthened today, because it's on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What is that about? It's about my, the fact that I'm dependent on God. Friends, it's gratitude, it's dependence, it's sitting every day going, I have clothes to wear, I have a roof over my head, I have food to eat, I have uh, healthy children, I, I have life, I have breath in my lungs, even if that's the only thing that you have. But it's the dependence, realizing that breath in my lungs is only because He is providing. He's providing. Give us this day our daily bread. And it's the physical bread, uh, the, the provision, the sustenance that we need, but it's also the sustenance of spiritual stuff that we need. And again, the way we pray this and the reason why Jesus taught this, it, it speaks of dependence. But I humble myself under the hand of God, realizing that every good and perfect gift comes from above. It is a blessing out of the hand of the Lord. So prayer reminds me of my dependence of God. A praying man is a humble man. That's what I believe. Because if you're in prayer, it means you understand who your source is. The next line, it says, and forgive us our sins. So it's this realization that we need salvation, that we need help, that we need purity, that we need his righteousness. We need to learn. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. So it's a two-way street, right? It's this reminder every day, Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for where I'm still wronging. Help me in this area where I still need breakthrough, where there's stuff in my heart that's not right. But then also immediately, and I forgive those that, that owes me, that is indebted to me. You see, it's important that we go through this process every day, that there's not offense and bitterness growing in our hearts. Who is there that we can forgive today? Who is there that I'm supposed to forgive today? It is powerful to go through this process on a daily basis. And this is what Jesus, the model that he's trying to give to us is, is this, it's, it's sonship. It's his authority, his power, the fear of the Lord is his kingdom, his will, not mine. And it's also the invitation of heaven to the earth. It is forgiveness of sins, my sins, but also forgiving others their sin daily going through that process. And then the last, the last part, it says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And again, it's the sense of the protection of God around my life. I need the hedge of his protection around me to, to circle me, to be there for me. Because I'm not an island, I'm not an individual that moves on my own. It's not by might, not by power, but by His Spirit, right? And it's, it's this acknowledgement, this beautiful little prayer, two verses long, that all of us know. But it's showing us a way and a model of prayer that's going to shape our thinking into the way of the kingdom. That's going to shape our thinking into humility, into... Um, into being dependent on the Lord, into acknowledging my identity. And it's stirring something in my heart every day if I go through this process. And again, many ways of prayer, many models, many things we see in the Psalms. Even if you continue uh, Luke chapter 11, the next couple of verses is also about prayer. But this is just the model that Jesus gave us when they say, teach me how to pray. And I want to pray that over us together this morning, that we will say, Lord, teach me how to pray, but also that we will take uh, the Lord's Prayer and just make it a bit and look at it a little bit deeper than just praying those couple of lines. But what is he trying to teach behind those lines? And like I said, there's levels and levels and layers of revelation in this. I'm kind of just going for the most simplistic ones. And hopefully it blesses you. But may we become a people of prayer, understanding this powerful, powerful gift that he gave us that said, do this and I'm going to listen. I'm going to move. I want to hear your prayers. 
So friends, I would love to pray for you this morning and for myself. Just say, and Lord, we, we want to ask like that disciple that said, Lord, would you teach us, teach us how to pray. Help us to understand the power and the glory and the privilege of prayer in our lives every day. Communing with our Father, accepted in the beloved, Lord, accepted in you and able to commune and speak with you like friends, Lord, in the simplicity of a son and a father talking to each other, a loving father and a loving son talking to each other and how you teach us, Lord, and grow us and activate us in prayer in ways we've never seen. Lord, we pray, teach us, allow us to grow, help us to see, help us to forgive, help us to be grateful, help us to understand where our provision comes from, Help us to see our dependence, Lord, and make us people of prayer. Psalm 109 says that I've become prayer. Lord, we want to become prayer. We want to become a house of prayer for you. So, Lord, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. And I bless everybody listening and it's going to listen as well. But you just touch them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Activate their prayer life in a whole new way in the name of Jesus. So friends, I bless you. I hope this touched you and I hope this helps you. Please share it with people and hopefully we can help some more people. So God bless you guys and we'll stay in touch. Have a great day. Bye-bye.